Uh, Chirac not looking to replace Diddy with 50 Cent as ambassador. Yeah, that rumor had went out. Brand ambassador is just a spokesperson and 50 Cent. I own my brands. I wouldn't be no uh, spokesperson, no ambassador for Chirac. I haven't seen anybody drinking that shit lately. It's over. Diddy's boyfriend called me a sellout. He's correct. I'm selling out Branson Cognac. Drink responsibly. All right, 50 be calling Stevie J. Diddy's boyfriend. Uh, good morning, people. Start the day off with posit positive energy and make your heart's desire happen. Queens get the money. Uh, I really don't know why people get me started. It never ends well for them. Now, a lot of people think, oh, 50's a snitch. He's the police, the way he be coming at, at Diddy and blah, blah, blah. I mean, I guess you say so. Uh, stop playing with me. I'm different, man, for real. Hold on, this is Shannon hey, Briggs. Hey, nigga, just say you want to fight me. Are oh, you stupid? I'm coming over there. Gordon Bumper. I'm coming over there. I'm coming over there. Nigga, just say you want to fight me. Are oh, you stupid? All right, there we go. 50, uh, 50, let Shannon Briggs know, buddy, uh, threatening to fight him. So he's going to come to the gym in Brownsville. For those that don't know, that's Shannon Briggs, heavyweight boxer. Right, Diddy's ex, Cassie, cooperating with federal investigators amid probe. All right, this has been the word out this week that she is cooperating with them. So she got that settlement money and she gets to go after him criminally. Whatever he did to scorn this woman, right, which could be the abuse and the torture. Again, I believe some of this stuff she might have been complacent in uh, for a certain amount of time because, um, you know, I mean, unless, unless she says something that lets me know how she was held there against her will for so long. You know, and what made it okay for her to finally be able to leave. <laughs> but Diddy's ex Cassie cooperating with the federal investigators in mid probe. 50 Cent, oh yeah, it's not looking good for the diddler. <laughs> TMZ said multiple Diddy documentaries in the works following federal raids. 50 said, yeah, a bunch of YouTube. Don't hate on my documentaries, 50. All right, these ain't documentaries anyway, they're reactions. Uh, yeah, a bunch of YouTube, Tubi, Tubi movie, Tubi movie type docs. The big one is Diddy Do It. Coming soon. Greenlight game. TMZ said uh, uh, Diddy was spotted cruising around town Thursday in Miami. Uh, 50 Cent says, smile, bitch. Smile, bitch. Damn. Last seen on a bike. Diddy's popped. Uh, you know there ain't no seat on that bike, right? <laughs> he really hates this dude. I'm thinking that when he worked for him as... When 50 worked for him as a writer, I'm thinking 50 saw... Diddy's bullshit from 100 miles away. And I'm thinking he probably, uh, you know, if not voiced, but made you feel his displeasure. No Diddy. Something, something, because he, he don't like that motherfucker, boy. Not even a little bit. What lesson did you learn from this? A snake. Can't help but be a snake. Don't be a dumbass bird. The f*** from around them now. Damn it, man. Not the kids. Leave them alone. Diddy's son, Christian. Accused of sexual assault, new lawsuit amid rappers, ex-trafficking accusation. Boy got a weak chin like his father. Just a couple of weak chin. No jaw, motherfucker. Stevie J, a producer who's also named in one of the lawsuits and was in Diddy's house when it was raided, went on TMZ Live to defend his boss. Listen. I don't know what my, whatever someone does in their bedroom, that's what they do. I don't got nothing to do with that. I'm just here to say that I've never seen... My man doing anything foul like they talking about. <laughs> that wasn't all Stevie J did. He sent out a warning shot, posting video of celebrities at Diddy's 50th birthday party. The Kardashians, Jay-Z, Beyonce, Kanye, Kevin Hart, every A-lister was there. And Stevie J wants to remind them. Remember, the lawsuit says Diddy has compromising footage of everyone that went to his freak-off parties. Now, we're not saying this is a freak-off party or Diddy has compromising video. So what are you doing, Stevie J? You just, you know, you sending out the warning shots, but you letting everybody know, like, it's the truth. Are you shooting yourself in the foot? Are you shooting yourself in your ass cheek? 50 Cent said, puffy boyfriend running his mouth trying to get everyone jammed up. That's what it sounds like. Like, in his attempt to defend Diddy, uh... He's putting himself out there like it's true. Is it true? You know, any of these people, but this is what Diddy's bodyguard said. I don't think it's only celebrities going to be shook. He had politicians in there. He had princes in there. He also had a couple of preachers in there. You personally, you think they got tapes? Well, 
my personal opinion that if Lil Rob could be trusted and his statements are true, they got him. They got tapes of stuff. Now, if Diddy had tapes, the feds have them. That's a lot of blackmail. His right hand man is. Bruh. Shit look like it's gonna get uglier before it get better. All right, so within those docs, and this is where it gets relevant, there's- Candace going deeper in the P. Diddy lawsuit allegations, and this is where it gets relevant. Yo, I, I, I keep hearing everybody say, oh, they're taking deep dives, taking deep dives. All they're doing is reading the lawsuit that we read, day one, and listening to now, listening to Jonathan Odie's uh, interview now, that we had already, we was already on that. Again, I'm sure somebody was on it before us, but everybody deep diving late, all the big boys. There's one man that is named as being the person that can do the cleanups, right? This is the guy that you are supposed to call if you get into any sort of a scenario. So in these docs, it says, Mr. Combs instructs his staff to always contact Mr. Muhammad, that is Fahim Muhammad, if they are ever pulled over by the police in Miami or California. Just to fix it. And upon information and belief, this is regarding the shooting that took place at Chalice Recording Studios. Again, he is alleging that Diddy and his son shot someone. And after that shooting, the documents say explicitly that Mr. Muhammad spoke with the LAPD after G was shot at the recording studio. The LAPD was in the recording studio and witnessed the blood in the restroom and they went with the bogus claim that the shooting of G occurred outside of the studio. This was all thanks to Mr. Muhammad's connections within law enforcement. All right, so within those docs, and this is where it gets- 50 Cent said anybody got Muhammad's number? What? I'm asking for a friend. Yeah, everybody wanna talk to the fixer right now. What did you fix, bro? Hmm? Where'd you bury the bones? What wrong with? 50 said, I have the savoir faire. I'm the reason everybody here. I said, get up. I got that from Gene. He been telling y'all the truth about Diddy for years. And when he sit up there, he said that he want to challenge 50. He, and, and, and I don't know much about that clout sh Him challenging 50 to a fight. And we seen how 50 sit. We seen how Stevie J fight on love and hip hop and all that other bullshit. Him, Scrappy, him, uh, this other cat. My man, there's no way. There's no way. He 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 don't want it with 50, bro. That that's if that ain't cocaine, the Pope ain't Catholic. And there it is. So you feel like 50 Cent would give Stevie J that word? It wouldn't even be a job. 50 Cent would whoop. 50 Cent will whoop niggas like Stevie J on the way to a real fight. You seen 50 fight before? I ain't never seen 50 fight. I seen some tapes of him get down on that end, but I never seen him fight in person. But I know the demeanor of a man. I was with 50 Cent on a couple of occasions, and one occasion, it was just me and 50 and about probably six other dudes that didn't want to get out the car because he was ready to get down. And you could see it in him. You could see he got it in him like that. I'm looking at him. I wrote this shit about, my, about this shit in my book. 50 ain't back. He don't back down, bro. And you could see when, when you know a dude is about it, about it, and got it in him, you could see it in his eye. You could see it in the way he, he, he carry himself. Something gotta be wrong with when Yeah, I don't think Stevie J uh he said he wanted, but so did Benzino with, with Joe Bunn. Joe Bunn said Joe Bunn told him pull up around the corner. He wanna he wanna make money off of this. Some dudes just wanna scrap. You know what I mean? Yeah, we're gonna see, man. We're gonna see what they got. But speaking of the raid, right? Did you see that viral video of Diddy he was seen in Miami with Stevie J after the raid? You seen that video? Yeah, I seen it. I seen it. What you think about that? Well, I go way back when Stevie J first came to Bad Boy after they left Uptown Records and everything like that. And Stevie J and Puff fell out real bad over, you know, uh, it could have been a girl. producer credits and the whole nine yards. Oh. But Stevie J didn't F with him until Love and Hip Hop when 
Stevie J went to love and hip hop and he became famous from that. Puff called him over there and they had a meeting and I guess they rekindled their friendship because I used to bodyguard Stevie J and, you know, uh, go to different clubs. So, you know, I got pictures and everything. Stevie J didn't, uh, he didn't mess with Puff, you know, until after that love and hip hop thing went down, you know. So now they back cool. What got me about the stuff like that, that them being back cool, that Stevie J went on TMZ and was speaking up on behalf of them. That's now, strange. I thought that was strange too. If anybody I want speaking up behalf of me, or I had anybody speaking up on, on my behalf, it wouldn't be Stevie J. You understand? I don't think that uh, an individual of his caliber is capable or can be trusted in a way that I would like for him based on his actions on television. To be your and spokesperson, to be the voice of your innocence, to be the voice of your wholesomeness. Stevie J? Nah, I don't want you to be my uh, spokesperson, bro. Who he is as a person, what he has been shown as an individual is a type of individual that I would have speaking on my behalf. Come on, we know he's a drug abuser. We know that he's been seen putting his hands on women in the wrong way. And I don't know, this this that shit is crumbling, man. You know what I'm saying? But you 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 know you can always say this, man. And and in the infamous words of one of the world's greatest comedians, Richard Pryor, cocaine is a hell of a drug. <laughs> Why you say that cocaine is a hell of a drug? Because LaRob said that they be doing the liquid cocaine in the, in the bottles, in the Ciroc bottles. We know Stevie J been in countless rehabs back and forth. We know We've heard of Puff being in rehabs, secretly going to rehabs too. So, my man, when you get on those type of psychotropical, uh, I think it's psychotropical drugs, man, and you start believing your own bullshit. I think without the drugs, they believe their own bullshit. I think the drugs just amplify that shit 150%, 200%. But I think without the drugs, they're full of themselves, they're obnoxious. And then you add that, they're a whole nother beast. They wanted that power before the drugs and money. And once they got the drugs and money, they knew that they could have some semblance of that power. And they use it. And them two individuals together? Man, man. You know, you know they got to be crazy. Something got to be wrong with when, when he sit up there and he said that he want to challenge 50. He And... and, and I don't know much about that clout shit. Him challenging 50 to a fight, and we seen how 50 Cent, we seen how Stevie J fight on Love and Hip Hop and all that other bullshit. Him Scrappy, him uh, this other cat. My man, there's no way. There's no way. He 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 don't want it with 50, bro. That that's if that ain't cocaine. The Pope ain't Catholic. So you feel like 50 Cent would give Stevie J that word? It wouldn't even be a job. 50 Cent will whoop... 50 Cent will whoop niggas like Stevie J on the way to a real fight. You seen 50 fight before? I ain't never seen 50 fight. I seen some tapes of him get down on that end, but I never seen him fight in person. But I know the demeanor of a man. I was with 50 Cent on a couple of occasions, and one occasion, it was just me and 50 and about probably six other dudes that didn't want to get out the car because he was ready to get down. And you could see it in him. You could see he got it in him like that. I'm looking at him. I wrote this shit about, about this shit in my book. 50 ain't back 
he don't back down, bro. And you can see when when you know a dude is about it, about it, and got it in him, you can see it in his eye. You can see it in the way he he, he carry himself. You see how he threw his own man in the bushes, Tony Ayo. They got takes <laughs> on 50 getting down boxing. I've seen I've seen takes on him. You know what I'm saying? I've never seen him in person, you know, as far as fighting. I've been with him in person, but he got it in him, bro. But yeah, yeah, that caught me by surprise because I always knew that Stevie J, he did production for Bad Boy, but I never knew him and D was that close until, you know, as of late, you know, since the raid, so. Yo, they was close. They, yo, bro, Stevie, Stevie J and Puff was like pots and pans back in the day. I don't know what happened between them, but something happened on the producing credit side that Stevie J stopped effing with him. All right, so what could that be? What do we always hear? These guys put their names on everybody else's work and calls it a, call it a day. And, you know, Stevie wasn't dealing with him at all. He was just doing more stuff for, uh, for Jodeci than he was Bad Boy. Long story short, as far as Gene D is concerned, Stevie J don't want none of 50 Cent. After Diddy's homes in Miami and Los Angeles were raided by Homeland Security investigators, it's part of a sweeping sex trafficking investigation by the Southern District of New York, or at least that's what it's being reported. That's what sources from law enforcement are indicating. Now, Diddy's two sons, Justin and Christian, they were seen in handcuffs outside of that L.A. home during the raid. They weren't under arrest. They were merely detained while officers were assessing the situation and going into the home. But Diddy, Justin, and Christian... They have all been named in these very big lawsuits. But remember, that is civil. That is the civil arena. None of them have been arrested or charged with any crime related to this apparent criminal investigation. But our analysts here on Sidebar expect that at least one arrest will be coming soon. But now we fast forward to Thursday when attorney Tyrone Blackburn, the man already representing Rodney Jones, filed a civil complaint on behalf of his client, Grace O'Markey. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing her last name, but I believe it is O'Markey. Grace O'Markey in Los Angeles Superior Court, accusing 26-year-old Christian Combs of drugging her and sexually assaulting her in December of 2022. When she so his daddy raised lames. He raised lames that got to do the same thing? Or is everybody coming for a money grab? Has everything been bullshit that we've heard thus far? Or did Diddy, a.k.a. his daddy, raise another dummy? She was working in a charter boat in St. Martin. So according to the lawsuit, Omarkey says that she had been working as a steward, providing food and drinks on that yacht for a 12-hour period. And she was 25 years old at the time. She believed that the trip would be a, quote, wholesome family excursion but says it, quote, turned into a hedonistic environment. A wholesome family excursion. Was it her first excursion with them? I'd like to know that. Because evidently, everybody that talks about it, even the people that are defending him in the sense that this might be a witch hunt, even they say, I left Diddy parties early. No matter what kind of party it was, I left Diddy parties around midnight. After midnight, it's a whole different party. Rampant drug use among sex workers and celebrities who came on board. Little ex workers. She believes that the alcohol in the yacht had been laced with drugs because she says women would have one drink and then almost immediately pass out or start falling over. Bruh. This is, by the way, something that it was also alleged in Jones's lawsuit. That uh, Alleged in jo Jones's lawsuit, spoken about by Mark Curry, about them have diff having different spike bottles for different people at the party. How much of these videos are they going to scour and bring to the trial? Are they going to subpoena Mark Curry? Are they going to subpoena all these people that have said all of these things on the internet as far as what they've seen and try to corroborate those statements with what is alleged in these lawsuits? Will these become criminal charges? Who knows? That Combs would spike the drinks of different people. But focusing on Christian Combs. Markey says that Christian Combs had been staying at a villa on the shore, but that he would come onto the yacht in the evening to party. And on December 28, 2022, Christian reportedly arrived very intoxicated and then proceeded to pressure Omarkey to take shots of tequila. She did. 
Christian allegedly tried to get her to drink more in the yacht's makeshift studio. Omarki alleges that Christian kissed her neck, kissed her face, as he groped her legs, breasts, and private areas. Omarki reportedly told Christian, quote, Excuse me, you don't touch my legs like that. I'll move my legs where I want to. If I want to do this, then I will. You don't touch my legs like that. Omarki then says that she told Christian she couldn't stay with him unless it was approved by a supervisor, all of whom she knew would be asleep at the time. So this was a way for her to get out of the situation. So was she a worker? Like for the yacht? She claims that Christian said, who can I talk to? I'm going to say I requested you right now. Well, Marky then says she responded with, quote, well, you can take your hand off my ass for the first thing. Well, Marky says that she tried to go back to her work, but Christian found her again, wanted her to find him a place to sleep for the night. So she ended up taking him to the cinema room for the yacht, which doubled as a place for people to sleep. And she claims that is when Christian blocked her and groped her, took off his clothes, tried to force her to perform oral sex on him, she says that she was able to fight him off until someone came in. She was helping him find the place for him to sleep, so she took him to the theater room. We're going to have to read this lawsuit. Now, the lawsuit goes on to say that Omarki told the yacht captain what happened the very next day, but he didn't believe her, didn't do any sort of real investigation. She says the captain retaliated against her for months after the alleged assault before ultimately firing her in May of 2023. Hmm. Now, aside from her account, aside from a potential other witness, right, the person that allegedly walked in on this, what proof is there that this happened? There's another witness, supposedly. I wonder if that witness is uh, Lil Rod. Well, she reportedly has photos of Hmm. the bruises Hmm. that she says were caused by this event with Christian Combs. But she also claims that in that studio, during that first interaction at the time, was Rodney Jones, that former Diddy music producer I mentioned, the one who is suing Diddy. He's known as Little Rod Jones. Remember, he had been basically living with Diddy while the two worked on his latest album. As we discussed on previous sidebars, Jones made multiple allegations against Diddy in his own lawsuit, saying that there was rampant drinking, drug use, sexual assault during Diddy's parties. He claims that he was groped by Diddy, that he was the victim of sex trafficking as he was forced to engage in sex acts with sex workers. Little he even ex-workers. claims that Diddy groomed him for homosexual sex. And for- right there, right there. You, you take the smile off your face. Uh, you, you could keep your eyes on Pro Tools. You take the smile off your face and you elbow that motherfucker right in his chest and you tell him, get off me, dog. And if he gets upset and you don't get a Grammy out of it, so be it. You stood on your square. Get off, radio. Facilitated for him to be sexually abused by actor Cuba Gooding Jr. He also claims that there are hours of audio and video footage documenting Diddy's alleged crimes and misconduct. And according to Miss Omarki, Jones taped this event with her. Yes, the lawsuit provides transcripts of audio recordings, and these audio recordings purportedly show, or you can hear, kissing sounds, her telling Combs not to touch her, her allegedly asking about whether she was drugged. Now, we haven't heard these tapes here on Long Prime. And who taped it? She taped it, or, or she's saying he taped it? So how did you transcribe it if you don't have the tape? Yeah, but... If they are what they purport to be, that is a huge piece of evidence. And remember, when we're talking a civil case, we're talking lawsuits, the burden of proof is much lower than a criminal case. It's just preponderance of the evidence, more likely than not that this happened. So the civil suit accuses Christian of assault, battery, sexual assault, and intentional infliction of emotional distress. There are big part of this lawsuit, she goes into the the mental anguish that she has gone through, the emotional harm that she has suffered. All right, we got to find this. We got to find this paperwork. As a result of that, it's important in order to prove damages. And by the way, she is uh, claiming unspecified damages, so she hasn't put a number amount on it. But Diddy, let's go back to him. He is also named as a defendant. He is accused of aiding and abetting Christian's behavior, 
as well as having premises liability because he was the leaseholder of the yacht. Now, now premises liability means that you have a duty to keep people on your property safe from injuries. We actually saw a lot of that same kind of theory in the Jones lawsuit when he was talking about this shooting that happened at Chalice Studios and the owners and occupiers of that studio should just be as responsible as the people who allegedly engaged in that shooting that he was uh, present for. Now, by the way, not sure if these new allegations could play a role in a future federal criminal prosecution of Combs. We're talking so much about the investigation into them. It could be that this is just an isolated incident here and could not be part of a sex trafficking charge. No, but it's a part of a, a character and it's a part of a, a familial family culture. It's part of a, a lifestyle, it seems. Although I do wonder if this Christian Combs incident or alleged incident could be part of a potential RICO or racketeering Ooh. charge. As I mentioned on a previous sidebar, when I laid out potential charges that Diddy could face, if we are talking about conspiracy to violate the RICO statute, RICO organized crime, that's what I'm talking about here, that there was a criminal enterprise, to prove that, you would need to show that there was an agreement to break the law, there was an agreement to have this criminal enterprise, and that there were steps or overt acts that were taken in furtherance of that criminal enterprise. Overt acts don't even have to be crimes. They could just be events. They could be things that happen. So could this be an example of an overt act? Could this be an overt act to further this enterprise of illegal sex and power? Could be a stretch. Yes, just something that came to my mind. Now. The Rico Suave, boy. They trying to smash him with the Rico Suave. Miss O'Markey, her attorney, Tyrone Blackburn, said, after this lawsuit was filed, quote, like father, like son, hmm. it gives us no joy or pleasure in filing this suit against Christian Combs, who has clearly adopted his father's pattern and practice of depravity. So far, there has been no response from Christian or his attorney at the time of this lawsuit. But a little side note about Tyrone Blackburn, the attorney representing Miss O'Markey and Mr. Jones. United States District Court Judge for the Southern District of New York, Denise Cote, had some very harsh words for Mr. Blackburn and has even submitted a referral to the New York Federal Court Grievance Committee, hmm. claiming issues with Blackburn in five cases. In her order, she writes, quote, Significant resources have been spent by judges of the court and defendants named in actions he has filed to address glaring deficiencies in his filings. A referral to this court's grievance committee is warranted. Judge Cote goes on to write, quote, A reasonable inference from Blackburn's pattern of behavior is that he improperly files cases in federal court to garner media attention, mm. embarrass defendants with salacious allegations, and pressure. That's a judge calling him out. That's a judge calling out a lawyer saying that this guy is an attention whore and he uses these tactics to uh, embarrass people and to pressure them into selling, uh, into settling quickly. I wonder what his record is. But again, this is a judge taking notice of a, of a pattern, right? Okay, taking notice of a pattern. The question is, is she trying to suppress for the Diddy side of things, or is she really doing her job and saying, this lawyer be full of shit. Y'all got to really look into what he's giving y'all. Don't just jump the gun. Pressure defendants to settle quickly. She goes on to write, indeed, his submissions to this court have been rife with disturbing allegations against the defendants and defense counsel. So the big theme here is that he allegedly files lawsuits in the wrong jurisdictions and courts and even allegedly called a defense attorney, quote, a disgusting racist. Now, this is being reported by Billboard. And in fact, Blackburn wrote an email to Billboard responding to Judge Coates' order saying, quote, not sure how this is at all relevant to Rodney Jones's case or any other case I have. This will not have any impact on my ability to proceed in Mr. Jones's case. Although Judge Coates' decision was a referral to the SDNY's grievance committee and not a sanction, 
I plan on appealing the decision. But remember, the Jones lawsuit was filed in the Southern District of New York, a federal court. So it does seem to have some impact, if you ask me. Yeah, the impact was instead of it being a quiet uh, little lawsuit, they had tanks at Diddy's front door. And look, while we don't know the specifics of these allegations, they do come on the heels of other criticism from other lawyers. After Blackburn filed the lawsuit on behalf of Mr. Jones, Combs' attorney, Sean Holly alleged that Blackburn ignored basically exonerating evidence. The quote was, our attempts to share this proof with Mr. Jones's attorney, Tyrone Blackburn, have been ignored as Mr. Blackburn refuses to return our calls. Holly goes on to say, we will address these outlandish allegations in court and take all appropriate action against those who make them. Then the attorneys for Universal Music Group, one of the defendants who are also being sued by Rodney Jones for their alleged participation and facilitation of the abuse and trafficking claimed by Jones, They argued that the claims were so, quote, offensively false that one of these attorneys, Donald Zakarin, wrote, a license to practice law is a privilege. Mr. Blackburn, plaintiff's lawyer, has misused that license to self-promote gratuitously, falsely, and recklessly accusing the UMG defendants of criminal behavior. So a lot of back and forth that we're seeing right here. And again, to be clear, everything that Diddy and his sons are facing are accusations. They haven't even been criminally charged. These are civil lawsuits. There has been no finding by a judge or a jury that they are liable at this point. Having said all of that, this is a very significant development, and we will see where it goes next. Yeah, it, it, it does seem like the same lawyer bringing out all these accusations and finding these people um, uh, with little Rod by his side helping them out. Uh, This young lady has a story to tell. We got to find the document and read the document, uh, see what makes sense and what doesn't. Everybody's being dragged into it. Evidently, whatever this guy, whenever this lawsuit got filed, wherever it got filed, it turned into Homeland Security raiding the man's house. See, they're saying that audio emerges, but where's the audio? We got transcripts of audio, which is what they say is in the young lady's case, but... New what audio has mean? surfaced as part of a lawsuit that accuses Christian Holmes, Sean Diddy Combs' son, of sexual assault. The music mogul is not accused of sexual assault in the lawsuit, but is included over allegations of liability and aiding and abetting. The lawsuit cites audio from a makeshift recording studio on the yacht where the alleged assault happened. This is the latest in a series of lawsuits filed against the rap mogul and businessman. Both men, father and son, deny the allegations against them. CNN national correspondent Camila Bernal joining me live with details on this. Camila, what more are you learning? Hey, Fred, so in this audio that CNN has listened to, you can specifically hear the accuser who alleges that she was being forced to take this tequila shot that she believed was laced with drugs. And in the audio, you can hear her asking Christian Combs if she was being drugged. Play that shit. And he answers, take the shot. Now, just to put things into perspective, the accuser was a crew member on the yacht. She was a bartender. And she says that shortly after this incident with the shot, um, she says she was cornered in a room. She says things became aggressive and physical and then says that Christian Combs forced himself on her and then says that it wasn't until another employee on the yacht came into this room that the abuse that she is alleging in alleging in this 31 page lawsuit stopped and she says it only stopped because that person came into the room. Now I want to read part of what the accuser's attorney is saying right now. What he's saying is defendant Sean Combs turned what was sold as a wholesome family excursion into a hedonistic environment. It resulted in an unexpected increase in workload for her and for her colleagues as well as unwanted exposure to unlawful drug use, sex work and general chaos. Now, why are they naming Diddy in all of this? And it is partially... Here's the thing. All of those things that they allege from the the uh, non-wholesome, you know, party that was thrown on that yacht, would any of those things be be said if if she wasn't alleging alleging what she was alleging? We didn't know nothing, but let's say she stood quiet. Y'all still worked every day on that yacht. Y'all still was there for parties, whatever, like 
them things were happening. You could point them out now that you're coming out with your story, but those things were happening. You knew those things were happening because he was leasing that yacht. Now, he is not accused of sexual assault, but he is accused in this lawsuit of liability and aiding and abetting because he was the one renting the yacht. Um, now, his attorney, or actually the attorney for both men, also speaking out and denying these allegations, saying this, this complaint is filled with manufactured lies and irrelevant facts. We will be filing a motion to dismiss this outrageous claim. Um, again, they have continued to say that this is something that they will fight, that they are innocent in all of this. So we'll have to wait and see. And and if you if you took pictures of your bruises and you had audio, which I, I don't know if they're saying where they obtained the audio. I'm going to go back and see. They say it emerges. If you have audio and you have pictures of bruises and you have a story to tell, did you go to the police? Um, how this plays out in court, if it gets to court, or if it gets settled at some point, which has been the case with a previous lawsuit. But again, we'll have to wait and see what happens as Diddy and his son continue to say they're innocent and the victims here uh, continue to say that they were sexually assaulted. The audio. And, and so while a music mogul Combs uh, isn't accused of sexual assault in the lawsuit, he has been accused of a range of sexual misconduct in other separate lawsuits. How might that play in? to this. Yeah, as I mentioned, one of the lawsuits was settled, but there are others that are currently pending, right? And so there's a lot of the uh, details that we've learned, and attorneys say that there's audio and video of these alleged crimes, or at least some of the alleged crimes. You're seeing uh, some of those cases there. The one with Cassie was the one that was settled, but there are other ones that we'll still have to wait and see how they play out. And of course, we all saw just last month as Diddy's homes in in both Miami and Los Angeles uh, were the target of a federal investigation. Tanks. And we saw that all play out on video last month. Where's the audio? Y'all got it. Why we can't hear it? I saw, I believe it was academics the other night watching a video. And it was the video that Misa Hilton, which is Justin Combs' mama, released of the raid. And she released it with an Instagram where she was admonishing the police for how they handled the situation and for how they pointed... Uh, weapons at her sons and cuffed them up and all of that and, and the force in which they came right and whoever it was i think it was act brought up a good point if y'all came for video how is this video coming out where does this this is video from that house on that day during that raid uh where did misa hilton hilton get access to this she don't even live on the on the premises i mean was the ring cameras under her name like she got this footage, so let's take a look. I haven't seen it yet. I just saw the uh, I just saw the coverage from uh, from X, so let's take a look now. Sean Diddy Combs X slams overzealous agents using militarized force during raid of LA home. Boy, they ran the trucks up in the driveway. Look at Buddy popped out the top. Yeah, y'all wildin'. They thought they were gonna run into some Tony Montana shit. Everybody hiding behind their tanks, opening opening doors to ranges, look at rip cameras down. Let's see who they got right there. They got drones inside the house just flying around with them. Hold on, we gotta slow you down, bro. Who they got? They got somebody. There we go. Who's that? That Justin? No, that uh Christian. Christian, if you're guilty, you deserve this, Papa. If the if the uh, if living the lifestyle that your daddy allotted you allows you to victimize women, this is what you got coming to you, bro. Yeah, it's Christian Cole. Boom, a little drone rolling around with them. That's the bosses. The bosses want to keep an eye on the situation. We got right there. That's Justin. He got lasers pointed at his chest. This is some of the stuff that Misa uh, mentioned 
in her Instagram post that her sons didn't deserve to have lasers pointed at their chest. And... Look at that, boy. Ran up in there. Run, camera, run that shit. But how did Misa Hilton get this tape to post it on her Instagram? Huh? Shouldn't this have been subpoenaed? Shouldn't this have been something that was underneath the warrant? There's holes in everything, man. Sean Diddy Combs' son, Christian Combs, accused of actual assault in lawsuit. Christian Combs, son of rapper, producer, and businessman Diddy, is accused of actual assault in a new lawsuit that names both men. The 31-page lawsuit was filed in Los Angeles Superior Court on Thursday, according to an attorney for the plaintiff. We'll call her Grace. Grace worked as a crew member on and bartender on a yacht leased by Sean Combs and his family in December 2022, according to the lawsuit. The experience was sold as a wholesome family ex excursion, but turned into a hedonistic environment, the lawsuit says. You're an employee on a boat. Nobody sold you the idea of nothing, you know? You work on a boat, there's people that rent out the boat. You know, it's different kind of things happen. The, you know, one family might have the family reunion on the boat. Another family might have, you know, one of these weird freak-offs. Again, nothing wrong with the freak-off as long as you ain't making victims, you know, at the freak-off. Uh, the experience was sold as a wholesome family excursion but turned into a hedonistic environment, the lawsuit says. And suspected ex-workers and other celebrities were often brought on board. In the early morning of December 28th, Christian Combs pressured Grace to drink a shot of tequila, and shortly thereafter, he assaulted her, the lawsuit says. Grace believes that tequila, which she says Christian Combs brought aboard, may have been laced with rugs, according to the lawsuit. Sean Combs is not accused of actual assault in the lawsuit, but is included on allegations of liability and aiding and abetting. Aaron Dyer, an attorney for Sean and Christian Combs, and also I understand that there's a an attorney that uh, defended El Chapo uh, has been hired by Christian Combs for this case. I'm sure there's no charges of actual assault on Chapo here in this country. I'm sure there would be if they were, you know, willing or abreast of what he was doing or if he did it on this side. I don't know, but we know for a fact that he did it on the other side. And we're going to be talking about that in the near future. Aaron Dyer, an attorney for Sean and Christian Combs, said in a, set, in a statement to CNN that they believe the lawsuit contains manufactured lies and irrelevant facts and says he will uh, be seeking to dismiss this outrageous claim. The lawsuit is the latest in the series. We know that. The lawsuit cites an audio recording. The lawsuit cites an audio recording from a makeshift recording studio on the yacht. So how did you get this recording? Who pressed the record button? Um... Does Grace know how to use the studio? What was happening? How did this tape happen? The lawsuit cites an audio recording from a makeshift recording studio on the yacht, which Grace said is where the alleged assault began. According to a partial transcript included in the lawsuit, Grace was being pressured to take a shot and ask Christian Combs, are you rugging me? Which, with Combs answering, take the shot. CNN has listened to the audio recordings and can independently verify the transcript detailed in the lawsuit. In addition to the tense conversation purportedly between Combs and Grace, Cassie's 2006 pop hit Me and You, which features Sean Diddy Combs, can be heard playing in the background. Right? Cassie's, invo uh, Cassie's involved even when she's not involved in this. Not even there, but her music is in the background. Cassie, whose real name is Cassandra Ventura, is Diddy's former girlfriend who alleges she was raped and subjected to years of repeated physical and other abuses by the music mogul. In November 2023, Ventura and Diddy reached a settlement one day after the singer filed a complaint, which was her first lawsuit in a series of actual abuse allegations against Diddy. Though an attorney for the rapper denied Ventura's allegations and said the settlement was in no way an admission of any wrongdoing. On the yacht, Christian Combs cornered Grace in a room and became physically, uh, physical and extremely aggressive, the lawsuit states. Combs grabbed Grace by the arm and attempted to force himself on her. The filing continues and stopped only when another yacht employee... Uh, the filing continues? 
I guess the assault continues and stopped only when another yacht employee entered the room. Photos included in the court filing appear to show bruises on the plaintiff's forearm. Following the alleged assault, Grace's mental and physical health deteriorated according to the lawsuit. She began suffering from anxiety and panic attacks, among other issues the lawsuit say, says. The lawsuit is seeking unspecified damages. I want to read the transcript and I'd love to hear the tape. I know uh, context is everything. Was she working? She wasn't working. She was having shots in the studio with him. Like, what was really going on? People say, oh, you got to believe blindly. I don't believe blindly. I'm sorry. I got two eyes and some common sense in my head to try to, you know, deduct and figure out what's bullshit and what's not. So so be careful with doors you walk through, right? Some doors I, I don't want to walk through. What am I going to the White House for? So that I'm under constant surveillance after that for the rest of my life? I'm on a, a, a dirty uh, phone that's being listened to. My crib is bugged. Maybe that guy's in the back. <clears throat> yeah. Watch what doors Ooh, if you If you're a guy there. that... So this guy has a, a painting of this guy wearing a dress hanging on the wall of one of his places on that island. What are these people doing in the White House? Look at this happy guy back here. Look at him. Oh, everybody's happy. Bunch of freak, pervert, deviant shit. People that can't be fixed. But the question is, did this guy unalive himself? Or did they open the door for him and get him out of there? Because he was in the business of blackmailing powerful people by using their own uh, deviance against them. He'd feed their need for what it is they wanted, and then he'd use that against them, you know. And they would give him things, money, buildings, businesses. This is, this is bullshit right here. This is, this is demon shit right here. Terror. Rogan's saying it. Protect Rogan at all costs. Rogan's saying it. That's how powerful these people are, that they making sure that that list don't come out. We all know that list exists. They gave us 99 pages of some other shit, some distraction shit. Rogan's saying it out loud. You're in a store, there's no items left, but nobody's buying anything. LA, I got tired of the media trying to smear this great city. They're saying you're a bunch of fucking criminals, drug addicts, and pedophiles. That is not the whole city. That is a very small, specific section of the city. It's called Diddy's House. That is, listen. Is Diddy going to jail? What's the over-under? Someone asked Shohei Otani. I know he got the... Those Japanese love gambling, bro. Or I believe they call it driving. But whatever, man. Listen, this is the only reason I think he might be guilty. Every celebrity in L.A. has had their home robbed except Diddy. And I thought about it. It's like, bro, robbing Diddy is terrifying. Because what if he's there? You break down the door, he's butt naked on the couch. <laughs> Meek Mill sitting on his lap, just, just, just petting him like a Maltese cat. Just, Meek Mill crying, oh no, wait a minute, I thought you was finished. <laughs> he's like, can't stop, won't stop. <laughs> you try to run out, you run out, the door is locked. You turn around, all of a sudden you hear, It's your asshole tonight. That's the joke he was talking about. That's why 50 said he was going to come out with a Maltese cat, all right? And Schultz got a viral winner with that one. It was perfect timing. Again, like he said, he was doing local content, trying to do local jokes at these shows and trying to talk to them about how LA's changed since the comedy scene moved to Austin with Rogan. Well, since a lot of the comedy scene moved to Austin with Rogan. And uh, it wasn't working. So he said, well, what's hot right now? Let me talk about Diddy. Talked about it to where he's still doing these this set of shows probably. And he's mad viral. And I'm sure he's getting his dates uh, booked up as we speak. Stevie J, who's a longtime bad boy producer. Of course, also a star of Love and Hip Hop. And he is joining us right now uh, to, just to give us caught up on how Diddy's feeling going through all this. Um, Stevie, welcome to, welcome back to TMZ Live. Been why would why would he come out there and do this? I I don't know I don't know if he would have done it without Diddy knowing he did it. But do they want him talking for them? A while since we talked yeah. to you. Hey, Stevie. Yeah, everything is good, man. He's on the spirits are up. He's spending time with his children and his mother. You know what I'm saying? I'm working out. You know, 
He's, he's doing very well. I've known this guy for 29 years. See, I'm not just a guy off the internet trolling. I'm a first-hand witness. And um, if we can get into this little rod lawsuit, can, is that is that all right? Sure. sure. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, first, I know this guy. You know what I'm saying? He's a musician. He's he's a church musician that you know, like everybody kind of kicked to the to the side or whatever. And, My bad. You know, I helped the guy, and got him a few gigs, and um. I know Rodney and this lawyer are running, like, they, they're just running a scam. This is an extortion right here, right? They did it to T.I. They did it to Tiffany Haddish, right? They did it to Nicki Minaj, the same people. Like, this is a bold-faced lie. Now, you see the lie he said about me in this lawsuit? Have you guys seen what he said about me? Right. The, in, the, in the lawsuit, Rodney claims that Diddy made him watch uh, a sex video that was showing you, Stevie. Um, that is... And that killed his credibility... A bit right there because it was proven that that was not Stevie on that tape, you know? So if it was not Stevie on that tape and it was somebody else, then how many of the other allegations are bullshit too? It's since been blown out of the water and everyone knows that that image was not you, it was yeah, someone else. But we all know that that's a lie. Because that was the, the first thing in the lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> right? So yeah. so at some point, the lawyer, what's his name, Tyrone Blackburn, Blackfish, whatever his duty, he's got to be held accountable for just... um allowing frivolous documents and lies to be brought into the court. Is, it, is, it, is there not a, a law against things like this? We should, well, look, so there, 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 there is something called malicious prosecution, but you have to go through the whole legal process. I, I, I want to kind of get in. That's a bad die job on, on, um, on Buddy's beard right there? Well, maybe on both the There's an intersection here. That, 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 that suit that Rodney filed is a civil lawsuit. But separately, the feds obtained a search warrant to basically raid uh, Diddy's Miami and L.A. homes. To get a search warrant, Stevie, um, they need to convince a judge there is probable cause to believe that Diddy committed these various crimes uh, for which he's under investigation, including human trafficking. So human, that's, human trafficking. That, that, I, I've been around this guy for 29 years. I never saw no underground tunnels or this and that. Listen, man, I know that. Y'all got jets. Diddy Sue Diageo, and here we are. You know what I'm saying? It's like, come on, this is a guy who started, you know, something big for the culture for us. As far as musically entertainment, he built the rock, he built schools, he did all this. They try to take, and that's all good. If one of the things, if one of the illegalities that have to do with underage women or taking it are real, doesn't matter. It don't have to be trafficking in tunnels. You know, if they took one 15-year-old across state lines, if they took advantage of one 15-year-old, either way, you know, I don't give a shit. It don't have to be, you don't have to see it for it to be true, Stevie. Everything away from this so guy. So, Stevie, let, let's talk about that, because you, you brought it up. There's a conspiracy theory that's been going around that uh, because Diddy had sued Diageo, the, the beverage company, and that this is some sort of the payback. corporate corporate payback uh, for him suing, going after them uh, for billions of dollars. And th does Diddy believe that, that theory? I'm not sure that Diddy believes it, but, you know, when all of this first occurred, you know, my thought process has never changed or shifted. Um, I just want to say, like, you know, this is um, a real crucifixion. They, they're just trying to crucify my man. Another black entertainer they're trying to crucify. No charges have been brought. And he hasn't been, you know, hit with nothing. Well, what has he been charged with? Well, he hasn't been charged at all. He hasn't been arrested. But there have right, been. They, they, didn't, they didn't do this to Harvey Weinstein. They didn't do this to whoever else was accused of anything. You know what I'm saying? But Come see, on. Didn't they just have well, a big, a... They just had this big busting um, with the rabbis in New York. They didn't do this. Come but, on, guys. And what was the what was the um, outcome of them rabbis in New York? That shit's still strange to me. I think I might have to get into that story. What was happening there? Where was that tunnel going? What, what they was doing? Why they was fighting for it so strong? How they get away with fighting for it that much? Black and brown people can't fight the police like that. I mean, we can, but we know what the what the um, repercussions of that is. They don't have none. What was that tunnel about? I gotta look in that story. I don't know nothing about it. Stevie, first of all, 
I'm not saying that he did this. I'm just saying that the feds got a search warrant. And what I'm wondering is, I understand that the way he could handle the Rodney case, because he's saying basically the guy's full of it. But when the feds get involved, I would think that Diddy's got to be somewhat worried because they've already gotten this search warrant. They convinced a judge there's probable cause. And ransacked both of his houses looking and for it. And took all take, this evidence. Did take evidence. So it would just seem Listen, to me that he's uh, got to be uh, that, a little bit worried good. about that. I don't, I don't, you know what I'm saying? I, I, don't, I don't believe that, you know what I'm saying? All I know is I'm going to speak on a thousand percent of what I know to be true about my guy. I don't know what my whatever someone does in their bedroom, that's what they do. I don't got nothing to do with that. I'm just here to say that sure? I've never seen my man doing anything foul like they talking about. None of it. The, all of it. I, I mean, I, you know. I, I've never seen it. I've known him for 29 years. And you've been, I, I, we should, obviously, you've known him for 29 years. You've been to plenty of parties. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, we've seen Absolutely. videos and photos of you guys hanging out for over those 29 years. So Absolutely. And and then it's like with guys like like 50, you know what I'm saying? Like Uncle Tom cats like that. You know what I'm saying? It's like you now you want to put me, I don't know if y'all saw the post where 50 posted about me. Of course you guys seen yeah, it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean 50 um, has been going after Diddy and everybody associated with him for months now, ever since the Cassie lawsuit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, you can't brush under the rug. I, I don't see anybody um, um, reporting about what um, tatted up Holly said about him beating her up and about, you know what I'm saying, his other baby mom saying beating her up. And she made a post. Did you see the post that his, yeah. um, his children's that mother? Thing. So yeah. how can you, how can you, uh, you know, I just look at it as, you know, he wants to bring the black community down worse than anyone else. How, how is that so? But I said what I said back to him. He didn't want to fight me. So I don't have nothing further to say about this Well, I, I, Steve, you do, I just want to go back to this because you brought it up. And obviously, 50 has been going after Diddy. Um, one, he claims his innocence. A little bit of Little Rod's credibility is, is, is off now because Stevie J was pulled out of that lawsuit by the fact that it wasn't him on that tape that he was accused of being on. Now you look like a liar, bro. Do you want to rephrase, or are you standing on what you said about calling 50 Cent and Uncle Tom? I said what I said, and I'm standing on it. Okay. I said what I said in my How? post, and I'm standing, and I, I, I said what I said in my post, and I'm standing on that too. Now, since he didn't accept what my offer to him, and he want to continue to be a comedian, why don't you go make some movies with Michael Blackson, and don't talk about me? Okay. If you don't want to fight, if you don't want to donate to charity, donate the bread to charity and fight. Don't, don't stop being a girl and talking about dudes. I, I know that I, it's very clear how you feel about 50 Cent. <laughs> Does Diddy pay any attention to these posts? Is it, is it getting at him? He don't even have Instagram. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't have Instagram. It's not getting to me. I find it funny that, you know, when they first cru try to crucify somebody, they go through the media first. And they're just flooded with it. That's a stupid answer, because who needs just Instagram to get the news? We don't have to go to Instagram. I'm sure if I typed in on YouTube 50 Cent's Instagram post, they're all going to pop up right there. You know what I mean? We don't just need Instagram. Lies and propaganda. I'm not concerned about this <laughs> Curtis. I mean, this dude Curtis. You know what I'm saying? He's Uncle Tom, and that's just what it is. Uh, Stevie, look, we, we want to take a break. We want to come back, and we want to talk to you about the raid at the Miami house which I believe uh, you were at when it went down. So let's take a break. We'll be back, and we're going to talk about exactly what happened. Welcome back to TMZ Live. We have been speaking with Stevie J, who, of course, is uh, very tight now. So, Stevie, I it's my understanding that when the raid went down in Miami, you were... Were you on Star Island, or were you actually at Diddy's house? I know you were in Miami. I, I, was, I, was, uh, I was at his crib working in the studio. I was sitting outside the studio door, and I heard a big boom. Now, mind you, before we get into this, I've, I'm, I'm not a spring chicken, even though I look fly to you and stuff. But I've witnessed some historical events of, of excessive force, but none like this since um, Saddam Hussein or El Chapo or Pablo Escobar, even. Even Osama bin Laden, I heard a big boom. 
So I'm thinking like, you know, a lot of people do work on the island all day long. So I'm figuring, bro, what the hell did that have anything to do with it? You, first of all, you weren't there when they got Osama bin Laden. You weren't there for none of them other raids, Chapo, none of that. Escobar got smoked on a rooftop. Like what? Figuring someone drops the materials. Heard it again. Turn my head, I'm hearing do, 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 do. Armored vehicles, three big armored vehicles come. Dudes jump out, I got 50 dots on my shirt. Screaming, yo, get on the ground. I'm like, yo, really? I'm the only one here. Stevie, when you say you had 50 dots on your shirt, you mean like lasers. laser? You're talking lasers. Lasers. La laser guide. Lasers. So lasers, yeah. Okay, so they put you on the ground? No, they, they like told me to walk back to them. They didn't even do all of this. They just told me to walk backwards and all of this, boom, boom. You know, and I'm just like, yo, y'all got to search for and All y'all had to do is knock on the door, you know what I'm saying? Open the door for y'all, you know what I'm saying? It's like, what are we doing? And it was broad daylight, right? When was the last time you guys seen a raid on two properties during the daytime? Well, it's happened. It's I happened. Mean, we actually saw that in L.A. with Jake Paul. Jake Paul, yeah. But but, okay. but be descriptive here. So um, they, they walked you back, and then what? Took me outside. I asked to speak to the higher-ups. I was under arrest. And they said, no, you're being detained. I want to speak to the higher ups. Spoke to the higher ups. Um, I said, am I under arrest? They said, no, you're not. Let me let you go. Boom. Let me go check your bags. You don't have any weapons and all. I'm like, I don't have any weapons. But y'all do what y'all got to do because I'm not going to leave. So I just stuck around. So did they actually put you in, in uh, cuffs or? Yeah, they had me in cuffs. They had me in cuffs. Yes. Did you ask anybody? What's this about? Did you have a sense of it? Did you think it was connected to the Rodney Jones lawsuit? What? Yes, I, I knew it was connected to those lies and the frivolous allegations by Rodney Jones and his attorney, um, Tyrone, in the lawsuit. And that's why it's like, we have to, you know what I'm saying, Harvey, you the lawyer, you gotta, you know what I'm saying, you gotta turn me on to how, you know what I'm saying, it's easy for uh, another lawyer just to make up some stuff and to get filed in the court of law. What? I mean, we should be clear, though, Stevie, like, the feds could not have gotten, I wouldn't think, a search warrant just based on a civil lawsuit that had been filed. They'd have to do some legwork themselves to go to a judge in order to get that warrant. Hey, we'll have, we'll have to see, won't we? We, we? we will see, won't we? What, uh, yeah. what did they, Stevie, what did they take from the house? Were you able to see? I saw, I saw them take, like, a bag, a bag of uh, one bag. Just one bag? Which, one bag. That was it? Yeah, toward the man. They brought a whole army to take one bag? And crib up that he worked so hard for. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is unbelievable. Well, did, did they take electronics? Because they did in Los Angeles. I'm sure they took um, some um, electronics, some of the camera stuff and all that. Probably they didn't want um, him to get a look at what they were doing to his crib, like how they came in with the armored trucks. Of course, they took all that stuff. Were you able to go back in the house? Well... He says they took all that stuff, but how did it get released by Misa Hilton, which is Justin's mom, which is Diddy's baby mama? How does she have that footage of them rolling up in the tanks? Stevie J just said, just like they don't want to see y'all, they don't want y'all to see the tanks rolling up. They took that video, and well, that video got released by her. How? After the raid was complete? Absolutely. So what did you see? Did you see that a hard drives were missing? What did you see when you walked back in? I mean, I just don't want to get too much into that. I just know that I walked in and I, I, they messed the man crib up, you know what I'm saying? And um, they did his crib dirty. And, you know, I just know, I haven't seen anything like this in a, in a long time. Stevie, so you were there at, when they completed the raid. We know that Diddy, at some point, uh, was still in Miami because they stopped his plane there. Did he come back to the house that night? Did you have a chance? to talk to him about what had happened during the raid? I, I had a chance to speak to him the next day. Okay. You didn't, did you call him at all uh, right at the time you were taken out of the house to, uh, when the raid began? They, they grabbed my phone as soon as they got this. They're like, you know, as soon as they, you know, they asked me to drop my phone, whatever, and then they just had my phone. Probably don't let you make phone calls during the raid, right? Can, can, right. can you tell us what, um, what his reaction was when you spoke to him the next day? You know, he was just devastated, just, just, just um, merely because he was going out of the country with his daughters for spring break, you know, and um, and all, uh, and they had to witness things like that at the airport. 
um, I believe that would kind of shift the thinking of any man in general. If, if you're going on vacation with your kids and the feds show up and ruin your trip, and they just their senior year, you know what I mean? So I, I know he was more hurt by that. Stevie, there was somebody on that airplane who was arrested for drug possession. Do you know his association with, with Diddy? Um, Brandon, that's one of his assistants. Right, Brandon Paul. Right. Did Diddy have any reaction to his arrest? Brandon, he's not a mule, he's the assistant. I don't know if he's a mule either. He's probably just a kid with a, with a brocane problem. You know what I'm saying? Who knows? Keep them addicts away from your children. So you're going on vacation with, with your children for spring break, but you got this guy bringing along brocane for himself, maybe. For you two, quite possible. For, I believe it was cocaine and weed. Um, I, I haven't even gotten into it about, you know, about be with him. Of course you didn't get into it, Stevie. Vacation with Diddy? Um, Brandon, that's one of his assistants. Right, Brandon Paul. Right. Did Diddy have any reaction to his arrest for, I believe it was cocaine and weed? Um, I, I haven't even gotten into it about, you know, about <laughs> be with him. No, I haven't. Okay, uh, one last, one last thing before we let you go. Just, uh, you mentioned Diddy being upset about his daughters, their trip being canceled. We've seen him since then uh, go out to Top Golf uh, one night with the with the girls. How are how is everybody else in the family feeling under the under the circumstances right now? Um, how are the kids feeling? And you know, are, are they rattled by this? Not to mention how they put guns to the, the boys' head in L.A. It's like, yeah. why are y'all doing all that? Why are you putting guns to a man's kid's head? They don't have nothing to do with that. You know? I mean, they did that They did that to the twins' family. Seems like it's what they do. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I cannot tell you how the kids are doing. You know what I'm saying? I know as a father who loves his kids, I know how I would be doing. I know my kids probably wouldn't be happy. Right. You know what I mean? I just had to let you guys know that is I haven't witnessed this type of excessive force even, uh, on television, let alone. But to be right next to it and, and see three armored trucks pull up with G.I. Joe's jumping out with big um, ARs, that's different. Okay. All right. Uh, Stevie, uh, thank you again for, uh, for sharing with us. Now, mind you, Stevie didn't say nothing crazy. It's just, you know, the allegations are crazy, the understanding of... You know how Stevie may be involved, but as far as I'm concerned, Stevie is all the way out of it now because he was named in that lawsuit and it turned out that it wasn't him. So that's on Little Rod. He f***ed that up.